we're going to be pulling someone's code from GitHub, and then we're going to, with that code, set the stage for Kubernetes deployment. And what is that code about? That code is about a backend app that your team member has just developed. Have a look at this cool little diagram we've prepared for you today. In step one of today's project, we're going to be actually creating a Kubernetes cluster, which is basically a group of containers that will be running your containerized application together today. So that is going to involve setting up an EC2 instance over here. And this EC2 instance is your main instance for sending commands to Kubernetes or to EKS to say, hey, I want to create a Kubernetes cluster. Can you do that for me? All the commands that we'll be running will be running through this EC2 instance. Now, this EC2 instance really can't control any AWS services until you give it the permission to do so. And that's the reason why you have this handy little IAM role here um, to give your EC2 instance administrator access so that it can have the power to say, hey, I want to create a Kubernetes cluster. So that's these two things ticked off early in this project. And then later on, we're going to be hanging out with this guy called EKSCTL. And EKSCTL is a very handy command line tool that's designed to make interacting with EKS really easy in the command line. So you can think of EKSCTL as just like this buddy that helps your EC2 instance over here talk to EKS in a very efficient way. Instead of having to run 20 commands to do what you want to do, EKSCTL boils it down so you only have to run one command. And that's the reason why we'll be using this tool today too. So with the combination of your EC2 instance that's capable of running commands, we're going to equip it with the power to interact with AWS services, which is why it has an IAM role attached to it. And then we're going to install this handy tool called EKSCTL that makes it very quick and efficient to communicate with EKS, our elastic Kubernetes service, to say, hey, EKS, let's create a Kubernetes cluster. So a Kubernetes cluster is a group of containers that's capable of running a containerized application together. Now, it's going to be running nothing if we don't give it anything to run, if we don't deploy an application with Kubernetes. So this first part, what we're doing here is we're setting up the cluster, but we, we're not really giving it food to eat. <laughs> like it doesn't really have an app to, to run. So that's the reason why we have the second part of the series today. Okay, so we're giving it an application to run. This project is about just setting up that deployment. We're like just preparing the meal before um, your Kubernetes cluster can enjoy a feed. We're going to be using GitHub to pull some code, the backend code that's already been created. And this backend code is going to be the thing that we want to deploy. Our end goal here is really to be able to deploy this backend code using Kubernetes. But how are we going to go from this code that you pull from GitHub all the way to deploying it over here in EKS? So there's going to be two steps that we'll be doing today to, to bridge that gap. You download the code and then you build a Docker container image of that code. And then afterwards, once you've built this container image, you're going to go and store it inside ECR. Now, ECR is a great place to store your container images because as you might notice, it's also an AWS service. So what that means is EKS has a very, very easy pathway to get direct access to ECR, grab this container image that you've built, and then deploy the app onto the Kubernetes cluster that you've set up in the first part of this project. Okay, so this is our journey here. We're going to be first creating this Kubernetes cluster. So we're like creating a group of containers that's capable of running applications. And then once we've created that group of containers, we're going to cook a meal so that it has something to eat. Okay, we're going to build a Docker container image of an app's backend and then push that container image onto ECR so that EKS is an easy pathway to access it. Now, one thing we haven't really mentioned is that you'll be troubleshooting installation and configuration errors throughout this project. As a pro student, get ready to face some errors head on. You're going to be absolutely crushing it. You're going to push your skills to the next level as you troubleshoot these errors. And trust me, your confidence level is just going to shoot to the sky as you solve more errors. It's a very rewarding feeling when you push through one and maybe you end up landing in another error, but you just, just keep pushing through. And eventually, you'll be able to see a very successful end of the project.